fans of the Horus Heresy, Warhammer 40,000, Gunpla, whatever else may bring you to channel Leaky Cheese, thank you very much for joining me for the second part of my 2000 subscriber giveaway Q&A. This follows on directly from the first part where I'm answering questions that uh, all you guys and girls left for me in the 2000 subscriber giveaway video. I'll leave a link to the first part in the description, please do check that out if you're interested. So same format here as the previous video. This is going to be about 15 minutes, give or take, of me answering the questions that you left. I'd just like to say thank you to each and every one of you who left a comment or an observation about the channel. I really enjoyed reading those and I appreciate all your kind words. And we're going to start with quite a deep question. Rob McCord, subscriber 92, good knowledge Mr McCord, asks the following. Do you consider your involvement in the hobby primarily as a social function, connecting you with your friends made during your university days, or perhaps in a world where the only constant is change itself, does a hobby represent a point of consistency and solace? Ooh, goodness me, right. So I deliberately chose a difficult question here. What do I think on this one? I guess it's got quite a strong social function. Many of the friends that I regularly see and game with are actually friends that date from actually my early secondary school years. So they're very long-standing friends and we, you know, we still share our enthusiasm and passion for the for the hobby in general, as, as well as other things in life. I guess there is a social function there. The friends I met at university tended to be a bit more be video game function orientated or, you know, other things. So you've got games clubs and other people I, you know, have met over the years who also game. So yeah, part of it is social. As they say, birds of a feather flock together. In terms of a hobby is, I, I don't know, a constant thing to do in life. Well, anything that you enjoy going back to your early years you know, is clearly an important part of who you are. Constancy through life is important. And, you know, as a, someone who's um, a little bit over 40 now, I've perhaps got enough experience and some might even call it wisdom to uh, appreciate that. As someone whose job is mainly focuses around thinking, mental evaluation, communication, management, I've always enjoyed doing the hobby from the point of view of doing something constructive with my hands and using tools and, and making and shaping things, which is something that my hot job doesn't have at all but something that I really enjoy doing. And the philosophical amongst you might think that sitting down and modelling for a couple of hours is a, it's a bit like meditating. I'm not saying that as if it was, you know, talking about meditation from a point of view of joysticks and crystals either. I'm talking about it from a point of view of giving something for your mind to focus on and just take yourself outside of the normal day-to-day -day thoughts and activities. There you go, it's a deep answer to a deep question. And moving on to the second question, Warlordry1, who joined about 1.25K, says, do you use an airbrush and what does your setup look like if you do? I've got two airbrushes. I've got a Badger airbrush that I bought about 20 years ago now with a fairly noisy but effective compressor with a tank on it. I'm kind of at a point where I'm done using that. I've now got an Awata Neo airbrush with a much smaller, quieter compressor that I'm going to start using for my next generation of painting, which is all going to be the Horus Heresy stuff. In terms of my setup, it's not particularly flashy. If I need to shield, it'd be like an improvised shield that I'll make probably out of an old card box or something like that. So I'll do it in a well-ventilated room, so I might do it in the loft bedroom. So thank you for the question. The next question comes from Nathan Smith, who joined around the time I did the Loot from Salute video. Uh, and he just says, by the way, love the graphics you used during your 8th edition Newsflash videos. Thank you, Nathan. Not one penny was spared, as I'm sure you appreciate. The next question is from Jackisme1993, who was subscriber number 470. The question is, getting back into the hobby, Size of the Emperor, Lamenters, with the announcement of the Primaris Graflino, what would you like to see moving forward with the law? New Terminators, the Squats, Iron Men, or maybe Biker Mice from Mars? Biker Mice from Mars are great, and I think we could also have Jace's Wheeled Warriors because some of those bad guys are pretty weird fusions of vegetable and machine, and possibly a little bit Chaos Corrupted, so yeah, maybe those as well. What would I like to see? I'm hopeful that with uh, uh, Caradron Overlords, i.e the re-imaging of the dwarves in Age of Sigmar. That may lead to a reappearance of the good old squats in Warhammer 40,000. I think that would be fun to see. Iron Men are a funny one because they're a uh, the fluff would need a lot of rewriting. They were destroyed 
before the age of strife in effect. Certainly the vast majority of them, so it'd be a bit of a weird fluff adjustment for them to appear. But no, I'm actually going to come out with a left of centre answer because I think this faction has been overlooked for a long time. And I think it would be good to get, finally, Plastic Sisters of Battle. So there you go. Polymer Perfect Adeptus Sorietus. That's what I'd like to see for 40k. Thanks for the question. Oh, and actually, uh, Jack Kiss Me, so 1993, finishes by saying, Sending you, Mrs. Leek Cheese, all the love from Yorkshire. Or well, as a fellow Yorkshireman, saying back at you, my friend. Matthew Jongama, who subscribed at 1900, asks the following question. What 30k units should you expect GW to translate into the plastic kits next? Forge World has a lot of great pieces that will be cool in less expensive format? That's a good question. I'd love to see a new Mark VI box set on the infantry front. What I actually think what would be a better crowd pleaser all round, and I really think this would be a crowd pleaser, would be a plastic Sikaran battle tank. Uh, I think that would be a great model to introduce in plastic. It would get snapped up like you wouldn't believe. It's such a cool and interesting looking design, and it's so faithful to both the Land Raider and the Rhino in some of its design cues. It's a bit of a modern classic, in my mind, is a Sakaran Imperial battle tank, so I would like to see that in plastic. So yeah, thanks for the question. Apollo Diomedes says, I joined somewhere around 1.2k, or cheers for the sub, mate. There wasn't actually a question from Apollo Diomedes. I just wanted to say the name. It just sounds great. Apollo Diomedes. Cheers, mate. Nymal, who subscribed at 700, says, Could you please share your colour scheme? that you'll be using for your iron hands. Flesh is weak. Indeed it is, we need more cybernetics. Yes, I will do. I'm not gonna share it now because it would take me too long. It's a bit unusual in terms of how it's gonna work. There's kind of like a load of alternating washing and varnishing to do the technique. So I'm not gonna go into it now, so it'll take me too long and I've not yet done it but I will certainly share it when I get to do some painting vids about the Iron Hands. It's a paint scheme that Forge World artist Mark Bedford shared with me at a Forge World Open Day, and it's certainly an interesting one, and I think it looks great, so yeah, I will, I will certainly do some content on that. Cheers for the question. Praetor Luke, who subscribed early on, so probably the first few hundred. The question is, what do you think about the new Space Marine hover tank for 40k? I think the Repulsor hover tank is a really cool looking vehicle. It's got some great nods to other Imperial designs at the same time as being something new and different that the Imperial Arsenal hasn't really had before. Um, so as a kit, I love it. Fluff wise, I guess Imperial Grav tanks, it's maybe... I can see that some people might feel that it's bending the fluff a bit because previously large Grav tanks have only been the preserve of the Legio Custodes or the Adeptus Custodes although we've not actually had any grav tanks with the Adeptus Custodes, but I guess the assumption would be that they had at least some of their grav tanks, like the Coronas and the Caladius, that survived the heresy. They just keep them tucked away. Yeah, there's kind of like a bit of fluff bending to do there, but that's clearly not stopped GW so far with the Primaris Space Marines. I'm really quite tempted to buy one to build a brand new up-to-date plastic Space Marine tank kit. I'm interested purely from a model perspective of getting one. Of course, I don't agree with any transport rules that restrict Primaris Marines from getting inland raiders, just in case you've forgotten. Thanks for the question. Trianus227 asks, have you tried to use Heresy Era minis and rules for Shadow War? No, I haven't. I haven't even bought a copy of Shadow War, so I'm afraid not. And then Cameron follows with a question in a similar vein, and Cameron subscribed around 500 subs. And the question is, have you been playing Shadow War? I'd love to see a comparison between that and Necromunda. So, as I'd said, I haven't played Shadow War, I haven't bought a copy of it yet. I do like the idea of what you're suggesting here, to compare it versus Necromunda. I played a lot of Necromunda back in the day. Brilliant game, absolutely fantastic game. I loved playing as Scavies. I had a great Scavy gang. It's actually one of the few 40k miniature sets that I sold that I actually regret selling. I wish I hadn't sold them now because they were such a good unit. I had a good number of gangers, I had a couple of scalers, one with a spear gun, one with a, a scatter cannon, and then a few zombies as well. I also like that question in terms of a bit longer context because of course I played, before I played Necromunda, I played the Confrontation games published in White Dwarves, Ooh, maybe in the 120s of the originals. So, you know, in the sort of late 80s, early 90s, and that was a fantastic game as well. A more detailed game than Necromunda, but very similar vein of gang warfare in the hives. And of course, Confrontation was essentially a reskin of the even earlier Laserburn rules 
written by, I think it was Brian Ansell, if I remember right, correct me if I'm wrong. I remember playing those maybe once or twice. I do quite like that idea, but I haven't got a copy at the moment, so good idea, not yet. We'll see what happens there. The next question comes from M3 Miniatures. Question, what are the chances of more Gates of Antares content in the future? Thanks. Well, you're most welcome. There is a very high chance of future content looking at Beyond the Gates of Antares. The sci-fi miniature combat game um, from Warlord Games, if you're not familiar with it. And it was written by Rick Priestley, veteran, of course, of Warhammer 40,000, Rogue Trader. Since you gave me this question, I've posted a full review of the Algorin AI Liberator combat skimmer. Hope you enjoyed that. Got an Algorin army that's mostly unbuilt at the moment. It's got quite a lot of stuff now. I've got a number of armoured infantry squads, I've got AI assault squad, an infiltrator squad, a variety of fixed guns, got like a plasma cannon, X launcher, compression cannon, maglite support, and I think I've even got the medic. And I've also recently seen the new Algorin Hazard troopers which are brilliant looking models so i'm really tempted to get some of those so yes there will be more gates of antares content i've also got a friend who's got a concord force and that's another opportunity to do some review by borrowing that off him to look at those guys so yeah that's something to watch out for and i think the final question for this section of the q a comes from mega faust who subscribed approximately 1,500 subs. And this is a really interesting question, and it goes as follows. I was the art director for Games Workshop stroke Sabretooth Games when the iconic Horus Heresy piece was painted of the Emperor squaring off versus Horus for our CCG of the Horus Heresy, so the collectible card game. It was brilliant working with Adrian Smith and seeing that come into the office, such a talented artist. This leads me to my question, what is it about the Horus Heresy that you love so much, and which, if any moment, would you love to see released as a model kit or series of releases? So, that, yeah, this is a great question. It's a really perceptive question, because, of course, so much of my content on this channel is about the Horus Heresy, and indeed, that's really what started me off. What do I love about the Horus Heresy? I suppose part of this links back to the first question I answered from Rob McCord, and it's that link back to something that I did in my childhood. There's a theme, shall I say, running through the life of a like of the Horus Heresy. I suppose one thing about it, and this is quite subtle, is the basic premise of the gaming. It's a civil war, and it puts Marines against Marines, and that's always led to, in my mind, really balanced gaming. Look, I like Space Marines, all my mates like Space Marines, so we all like loyalist style Space Marines, or uncorrupted Space Marines. So the heresy gives us a way to collect our marine armies and still play thematic battles with them. That's another thing that I really like the heresy. I like the heresy because it's also, it's, a, it's like an origin story. I really like origin stories. It doesn't matter what part of life I'm in, I like to understand the origins of things and I'm very fascinated by the origins of things. And the Horus heresy is very much a story of the origins of the modern Imperium of Man. So I love it for that as well. And then the final thing, and particularly what's brought me back to it recently, over the last few years, has been the Horus Heresy Black Books from Forge World. I think they're going to go down as real classics of the wargaming genre, certainly sci-fi wargaming genre. That They are just so well written, and if you read all the history, it's so cleverly conceived. It's got such a rich background and such a deep background that if you have any knowledge of history, there is so much real history that's woven into the Horus Heresy. And, you know, I, I just love it for that as well. I think in 20 years' time, people may well look back on the Horus Heresy books with the same sort of affection and regard as people now look back on Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. What moment would I like to see released as a model kit or a series of releases? Gosh. So that's a tricky question about a model kit of the moment because there are so many memorable moments in the Horus Heresy. I'm going to try to think of something that's a bit different. There are obvious candidates like the battle between Horus and the Emperor on the Vengeful Spirit, but I'm going to try to think of something a bit different. And this, my idea is actually a dual purpose model, and it will be a model of the Golden Throne, and it can be presented in three ways. It could be presented with the living Emperor before his mortal wounding in his fight with Horus, sat upon the Golden Throne. That would be the first representation. The second would be Malkador the hero, would depict Malkador the Sigilite sat upon the golden throne. And I don't know how you'd show him, but if you'd show him at his final moments when he passes his last psychic energy to the 
dying near death emperor or if you'll show him when he sits on the throne and initially tries to rest with its immense power so i think that would be good and then the final version would be to have the mortally wounded emperor upon the golden throne that could show him immediately after he was interned following his mortal wounded by horus or it could be a version that shows him in the 41st millennium in his undeath-like state. That will be a very interesting subject matter and although it's not a gaming piece I think it's just a fascinating thing and the Golden Throne is such a central concept to the whole of Warhammer 40,000 the Horus Heresy. I think that'll be a fascinating subject matter. So thank you very much for that great question Mega Faust. I appreciate that. And that brings me to the end of part two of my 2000 subscriber giveaway Q&A. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me ramble on a bit. Please join me for part three which will follow this soon. Thank you very much for watching, I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.